This is Christopher Cernike hosting episode 20 of season 3 of the Current Topics in Science podcast. This podcast will address breaking scientific news in light of the origins debate and host interviews with scientists. This podcast is available on the following platforms, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Video recordings of the podcast will be uploaded to YouTube. Enjoy the podcast. How long would it take you to count every star in the night sky? A hundred years? No, a thousand years? A million? Actually, you could probably do it in about two hours. According to Earth Sky, considering all the stars visible in all directions around Earth, the upper end on the estimate seems to be about 10,000 visible stars. Well, now how do we get that two hour figure? Well, according to Math is Fun, the website, to count to 10,000 takes about two hours. So in just two hours, you could be able to count the visible stars in the night sky. In fact, NASA actually encourages kids to get involved in their star count activity. However, instead of taking the time to actually count all the stars that they can see, students will instead learn how to estimate a total number based on random samples of sections of the sky. They then enter the number of stars and information about their viewing conditions and location in an online database. Pretty cool, right? What about every star in the known universe? According to Dr. Werner Gitt, no human being lives long enough to count such a large number. So we'll use a computer, one of the fastest ones available. It can do 10,000 million calculations in one second, which is extremely fast. Even at this great speed, it would require 30 million years of non-stop counting to count the stars, but no computer could last as long as that. All that counting sure sounds like quite a lot of work. Humans have been working on inventions to help them count for what seems like the longest time. I mean, after all, who's been counting the seconds since the dawn of the abacus to the rise of the AI image or object detection? According to Chinese history, the abacus was invented during the Ming Dynasty by a mathematician that could be used to perform calculations by sliding counters along rods or in grooves. And even though the abacus is still around, Artificial intelligence can be used to count objects. According to Medium, image or object detection is a computer technology that processes the image and detects objects in it. Image detection is used to find out the number of objects in the picture. It's truly amazing how far a technology has come. From the abacus to AI, humans have found very creative ways to count. However, did you know that humans, including you, have your own built-in counting system. Our eyes are designed so that our pupils will actually change their size corresponding to the number of objects in our visual field. According to Live Science, pupils are holes located in the center of the eye which change size to regulate the amount of light that enters the eye based on how much is available in the environment. The researchers of the new study hypothesized that the pupils may also change size based on the number of objects that a person sees in their environment. So what the researchers found was that this ability was present at birth. David Burr, a professor at the University of Sydney and the University of Florence, said in the statement, Previous research has suggested that humans may develop a crude number discrimination as soon as a few hours after birth, according to the study. So basically, the experiment involved the participants looking at black or white dots presented to them on a monitor screen. And what they found was that the pupil size changes depending on how many dots were perceived. So in other words, the more dots a participant perceived, the more their pupil would expand. Elisa Castaldi, the postdoctoral researcher from the University of Pisa, she summarized the study by saying, that the results show that numerical information is intrinsically related to perception. This could have important practical implications. Indeed, this information also has relevance to competing models of creation and evolution. The idea that pupils can function as essentially what is a built-in counting mechanism, it's an idea that fits well with the creation model. Evidence for the design of eyes can be found even in fossils that are dated as the oldest by evolutionary researchers. 
Speaking of eye design, Dr. Bergman said that trilobites, considered to be index fossils, have incredibly designed eyes. In his paper discussing eye evolution ideas, he wrote, Advanced vision appears almost at the very beginning of the fossil record. The oldest eye in the fossil record, that of the trilobite, is a very complex faceted compound eye that dates back to the Cambrian, conventionally dated around 540 million years ago. The fossil evidence shows that from the beginning of the fossil record, eyes are very complex, highly developed structures. Dr. Bergman summarized the evolutionary view of the origin of eyes by saying that the source of the design and evolution of the eye, Darwinists postulate, was a series of beneficial mutations that had to occur in appropriate unison in order to produce the set of structures required for eyes to function. The new mutation set, Darwinists argue, resulted in a superior structure compared to the old one, and this new and better eye improved the animal's ability to compete against other forms of life. Dr. Bergman points out that this idea is not plausible because an organ that did not aid in the animal's survival would use scarce energy, nutrients, and body space, and if the organ were not used, would be at high risk for problems such as infection. An eye modification would not be selected until it was not only functional, but produced a system demonstrably better than the existing organ. Only then could natural selection operate to choose from existing variations to perfect the organ beyond mere functional effectiveness. So what do you think? Are eyes the product of design or evolution? I hope that you'll check out some of the resources in the description, as I believe they'll be helpful as you research the answer. Until then, have fun counting the stars, and remember that God has promised in Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 10 to keep you as the apple of his eye. Thank you very much for taking the time to learn with us on current topics in science, where scientific discoveries are examined in light of the origins issue. Be sure to check out my full interview with Dr. Jerry Bergman, and please share and subscribe to the Current Topics in Science podcast. It's available on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Thanks again for listening, and remember, the truth saves.